Um, so my name is Sepi De, I go by Sepi. Um, I'm a product manager on the Heroku platform. Um, and I'm focused on the enterprise collaboration of Heroku, which is enterprise accounts, enterprise teams, and I also work on some developer experience features. And I'm Jesse. I'm a software engineer at Heroku. And during my time at Heroku, I've been mostly working on the features that are for our enterprise customers. So I've been super lucky to work with Seppi as my product manager um, and be able to deliver all these awesome features that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, yes. Yeah. So a lot of the things you're going to see today, um, we worked on them together for the past two years, I guess, almost. Yep. Um, so, a forward-looking statement, if you've been to Dreamforce, you've probably seen this like 100 times or more, but I have to go over it again. Uh, please make any purchasing decisions based on the products that are available in the market today, not based on what you see that is like indicated as a beta or in development. So with that, I'm going to pass to Jessie. She's going to talk about her experience and take you on a tour of uh, a, developer a developer on the Heroku platform in an enterprise environment. Thanks, Epi. Awesome. So before we get started talking about Heroku, we want to get a little bit of a sense of our audience here and how much all of you know about Heroku. So when I say go, I want people to hold up their fingers and show me on a scale of one, one being like potentially you think that Heroku is a candy bar and you're like a chocolate for breakfast person, which is why you showed up to this 9 a.m. session and 10 being you've been developing on the Heroku platform for 10 years. So on, when I say go, show me on that scale how much experience you have with our platform. Ready, set, go. Okay, see you one, love chocolate two, thank you. Five, awesome, one, one, okay. Okay, so we have a good scale here. I didn't see too many scores over five that I saw, but um, that's really good to know. And so we're definitely gonna cover some of like the basics of what Heroku is and then dive a little bit into some of our more advanced features. So before we get started, a quick outline. Like I said, we're gonna talk about what Heroku is, we're gonna talk about what kinds of organizations should be using Heroku, and then we're gonna dive, I assume people are excited to talk about App Dev for Enterprise, that is the title of this talk. Um, so we're gonna talk about the App Dev experience for enterprise customers, and then we're gonna talk about the enterprise experience for like a manager or an admin. And actually one more question for this group. Who here would consider themselves to be an app developer? Raise your hand. Great, so we have a few. And then the other people here, like raise your hand if you kind of just work with app developers or adjacent to them, maybe you manage them. Great, okay. that makes sense. Great, perfect. So we actually have content that will be great for yes, both, both groups. Group. I am a developer, so I'm gonna be talking about the app developer experience, and then Seppi's gonna go over some of the other features that are really great for the managers and admins in your org. And then we're gonna have some time for Q&A, so as we go along, please be making mental or physical notes of your questions. We would love to answer those for you at the end. Sweet. So before we get started on what the Heroku platform is, I wanna talk about the value proposition of Heroku. What value is Heroku bringing to your organization? Now we've all heard the slogan, move fast and break things. Yes, yes, we've all heard it, right? So this is the famous Facebook slogan, and the meaning behind it is essentially, we are moving so quickly, our organization is growing so rapidly that we might break a few things in the process, but that's okay, that's just the reality. Now, does anybody here know what Facebook's new slogan is? They actually did a rebrand of this in 2014. Yell it out if you know it. Anyone, anyone? I'm not surprised nobody knows it. It's a lot less catchy than move fast and break things. It's move fast with stable infra. <laughs> So it's not surprising that this hasn't caught on exactly as much as move fast and break things. However, this new slogan is actually a much more accurate representation of what makes great software organizations. Um, and research backs this up. So I love reading the DORA report, the DevOps Research Association report that they do every year, which is based on over 30,000 software professionals and it, they basically break up the responses and figure out what makes really awesome software organizations awesome. 
and one thing they found is what's shown on this screen, which is that the highest performing orgs deploy more frequently and have better deploys. So move fast and break things, it has this kind of false dichotomy of like you're either moving quickly and breaking things or you're moving slowly, but everything's perfect. And that's actually not true. The organizations that move the most quickly break the fewest things. And in the world of DevOps, that means that organizations that are deploying more frequently, and by more frequently, I mean multiple times a day on demand. Those organizations have better deploys, they break things less often, and then when they do break something, they're able to roll it back more quickly and get their customers back into a good state. So with Heroku, our promise is that you will be able to deploy more frequently and do better deploys, which means you'll be able to deploy even more frequently and do even better deploys. So this is for those ones in the audience. Um, what is Heroku? Unfortunately, it's not a candy bar. Um, it's the fastest way to go from an idea to a URL. So if you are an app developer, if you know JavaScript, Python, PHP, Java, Ruby, you write your app on your computer and then you get it working and you're like, great, I want my customers to see this new feature. I want my customers to experience this bug fix. But getting it all the way to the live internet is actually, there's a lot of steps in between that, right? And so Heroku makes that all super easier for you. So it's really the fastest way for an app developer to get their code to their customers. Without Heroku, app development often looks a lot more like this. You as an app developer are a really cute rabbit <laughs> and the code delivered to your customers is the carrot. But there are all these steps you have to go through to get that code out to your customers and it just takes a super long time, it's complicated and it doesn't allow you to do that quick, more deploys, better deploys cycle that we were talking about earlier. So to illustrate some of these points, I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself. Um, as you all know, I have been a developer, I am a developer at Heroku right now, and I've been working at Heroku for about two years. But I actually, on that scale of one to 10, am a 10. I've been developing on the Heroku platform for 10 years, many, many years before I worked at Heroku. And my early experiences were all with startups here in San Francisco. So I was a software consultant back in the day. Um, in this case, software consulting meant that I was writing code, but most importantly, I was evangelizing software best practices to startups. Those best practices being test-driven development, continuous integration, continuous deployment, pair programming, all of these things. It was my job to come in and embody those principles and evangelize them to the rest of the company so that organizations could build great software. These organizations, these startups, they were all different. Some of them were B2C, B2B, some of them had one employee, some of them had 10 or 20 employees, but one thing all of them had in common is that they all deployed with Heroku. So in this time, I had kind of two thoughts about Heroku as a platform. My first thought was, I actually never really thought about it, to be honest. It was just part of my toolkit. And that's kind of how great tools are, right? When something's really working for you, when something really helps you in your day to day, you hardly even think about it because you just say, well, and then I finish my code and I deploy to Heroku and it's done. So it just wasn't something that I thought about that much. And my second thought was, someday I'll grow up and I'll work for a big company and I probably won't be able to use Heroku. Because to be quite honest, at this time, almost 10 years ago, Heroku was not a platform that was fit for enterprises. Heroku's origin was really for the single dev, hobby dev, startup, and there wasn't tooling to help teams collaborate. There wasn't fine-grained access controls. And so I had in the back of my mind, like, oh, this is a great tool for now, but like someday I'll go to the big leagues and, and I'll be able to, to deploy, you know, like with the big kids. So this was a great job, I loved it. After a while, I decided I wanted to try something new. So, I went to Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, right now, there are some really awesome programs in our federal government that are trying to bring innovation, the kind of innovation we have here in the Bay Area, and in tech in general, to Washington, D.C. So, as I was evangelizing those software best practices to startups in San Francisco, I was bringing all of that knowledge, all of that excitement to D.C to modernize government IT. Now, 
like I said, I was bringing those practices. We were doing, you know, TDD, we were pairing, all this awesome stuff. But there was one part of my toolkit that I did not bring with me to DC, and that was my beloved Heroku platform. Yes, as many of you know, procurement and government is challenging. You can't just say like, oh, I wanna use this thing, can I put my credit card on it? You know, that's, that's startup land. In DC, there's a long process to be able to use any platform, and Heroku was not a platform that I could use. So, our deployment infrastructure was, uh, it was more similar to maybe what some of you have experienced in larger orgs. We had an entire DevOps team devoted to setting us up. We were deploying to the cloud, but we weren't using Heroku, so they had to set up all of our infrastructure. And then, because it was so complicated and like this bespoke thing, they deployed for me. So, whereas previously I could deploy multiple times a day, I could really capitalize on that virtuous cycle of more deploys and better deploys, I could not do that here. Um, at a certain point, I went to my DevOps team and I was like, hey, uh, you guys, I'm pretty good with computers. Do you think I could deploy my own code? Uh, and they said, sure, okay, we'll teach you. Um, and I regretted that so much <laughs> later on <laughs> because once they taught me how to deploy my own code, I realized that this process took two hours. So even if I'd wanted to, even if I'd found two hours a day to deploy my own code, I definitely couldn't have found four hours, right? So multiple deploys a day just was not possible with this kind of infrastructure. So I was able to bring all these awesome practices to the government. It was really exciting to be able to build apps for government and solve hard problems, but I was not able to be doing continuous deployment the way that I wanted to. And this slide really shows why that was. So when I was in startup land, I was writing that customer code. That's me in the pink at the top, right? I'm writing my code, I'm writing JavaScript, I'm writing Ruby, it's looking great. And then I wanna get it to my customers. And in the world of Heroku, all of these layers are taken care of for me. I just don't have to think about them. It's all pre-configured for me. Security, scalability, it's all there. And when you're in a world where you're deploying to the cloud but you don't have a, pro a platform as a service like Heroku there for you, you have to take care of all of these things. Great, so I had a great time working for the government and after a few years, I said to myself, you know, I think I'm ready to go back to the Bay Area. So, I found myself back here in San Francisco working for this guy, working at Heroku, which is part of Salesforce. Now, the fascinating thing about coming back to Heroku after a few years was that the platform had changed. While I'd been away, Seppi and other people had been busy making it a great platform for large organizations and for enterprises. And in addition, Heroku itself is an enterprise, right? We have over nine million apps running on Heroku, and those apps receive over 28 billion requests a day. So this is enterprise scale, right? This is not your silly little toy app that like, oh, if it breaks, it's okay. It's like we, uh, you know, trust is our number one value because we are a part of Salesforce, and we make sure that our app is always up and we have high availability but we internally at Heroku use our own platform. So we deploy our apps. I'm on a team of 20 engineers. We manage several dozen apps. We deploy them all with our own platform. And so this experience has shown me that Heroku is a great platform for enterprise. Yeah, things have drastically changed, I would say, in the past like few years. Exactly. Yeah, so yes. the mind, we we're hoping that the mindset would also change from like thinking of Heroku as being this platform that is great for like startup to actually understanding that there's so much there for, for enterprises as well. Totally. So, now I'm gonna show you all what this, great experience, what this great Heroku enterprise developer experience looks like through a quick demo. All righty. So I have to push this thing. Okay. So here you see what's called a Heroku pipeline. On the left are review apps, one of those exists for each pull request. Then I have my staging, which is gonna be just like production, but somewhere I can see my code before it goes live to my customers. And then I also have my production, which is gonna be the actual application that my customers are looking at when they see my code live on the internet. 
Now in this pipeline, I have staging configured to do auto deploys, which means every time code is merged into my master branch, it goes to my staging instance automatically. So think about two hours of deploys versus automatic deployments. And here you can see the commit SHA, so you can see the code on staging and prod is the same. Here we have our really cool app. This is a Node.js app that's just a basic example that shows you Cody the bear playing his banjo by the lake. Thanks, Cody, so cute. Um, and back to our pipeline, um, I've gotten a feature request from my PM, Seppi. She's told me that she wants this app to be more intense. So no more chill camping. Camping should be intense. So here you'll see a GitHub pull request. This is where we submit all of our code on my team, and you'll see my changes are here. Um, all of the instances of chill are intense. But as many people in the room know, not everybody speaks code. Not everyone can just look at the code and know exactly what it's gonna look like in prod. So for this app, we have what's called a review app, which means an automatic deployment of your code to a staging environment. We also have Heroku CI, so you're doing continuous integration as part of this. Now I'm looking here at this deployment. So this code, ah, it looks different, right? There's a grizzly bear, it's no more Cody the bear, because this is showing the code that's just on that branch. This is not what my customers are seeing. This is just these changes shown in a production-like environment. Now I can share that URL with my team, I can share it on Slack and share it on email, they can all see the changes. Once it's approved, that code's gonna be merged into master. And then as you can remember, we have auto deploy set up so that the code can, will automatically be deployed to the staging instance of my pipeline. Great, so that was merged. Back to the pipeline. And right now, the check is pending. CI must pass before this deploys to staging. Great. That's running, I wanna make sure those automated, I'm writing tests for all of my code, I wanna make sure those pass before it auto deploys to staging. That's super, super important. That's part of my deploy process. Cool, those tests pass. Now, right before this code automatically deploys itself, I wanna look at staging and see what it looks like before, right? So I've still got Cody the Bear there. This is representing what my customers are seeing live on prod. But that code just released itself because the CI passed. So let's look at the changes and make sure they look okay. Here we are. There is my Grizzly. Wow, Seppi's gonna be so happy with these changes. I'm very, very yeah. excited to show her. So now I'm gonna promote these changes to production. And this deployment is so easy, it really is just one click of the button and it happens so quickly that don't blink because you might miss it. And there we go. This version has been released. I'm now gonna look at production because this is what my customers see and I wanna QA it and there it is. There it is, my grizzly bear. Super intense camping, awesome. Yeah, probably the toughest decision in my product management career. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite a change, it's quite a change, but we like it. Great. So finally, what I just showed you, that's how we're deploying all of our apps. Like I said, my team of 20 developers manages dozens of apps, and we do it using pipelines. And through those review apps, through Heroku CI, by deploying to staging easily and automatically, we're able to, we're able to manage all that easily. Finally, I just wanna cover chat ops, because this is something that, didn't, that wasn't covered in my demo. Now, my team, I don't know about you, a lot of us live in Slack these days. Anyone, anyone? Yes, lots of slacking. And we are also a distributed team, so I'm working with people across many time zones, in some case, many continents. And so one way we all stay in sync on our development team on which apps we're deploying and when is by deploying via Slack. So this is a screenshot of me deploying our enterprise service to the staging environment. And then you can see the green indicator shows that it was a successful deploy. So everyone on my team knows both that I deployed and that it was successful. And then you can see that I deployed to prod, successful again, and this is a great way for large teams and enterprises to stay in sync about who is deploying what and the status of those deploys. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, you saw um, the experience of Jesse as a developer in an enterprise environment, so at Heroku, at Salesforce, which is a big enterprise company. So now I'm gonna take you on a tour of what we have out there for people who play the role of a manager within an enterprise company. So. Let's say you are not writing code, you're not a developer, you might be um, like an admin, 
in, an, uh, in a development team, you might be an engineering manager, you might be someone responsible for the finances across the company, DTO, so there are so many different management roles, obviously, I don't have all of them here, but these are some, and I just want to tell you about the features that we've built for this group of people who work in an enterprise company and need to work uh, with developers and kind of keep an eye on a development environment. So one of the features that we have today, or one of the products that we have today, is uh, what we call an enterprise team. So as the name indicates, it's a team. Um, it's an environment that is built, uh, created for developers to build a product within, to build an app within. So what an enterprise team offers is basically an isolated, secure environment for collaboration and writing code and development. So the demo that Jesse showed you was all of that was happening inside an enterprise team. So if you are a manager, if you're responsible to manage one of these teams, one of these projects, you can set up SSO for that enterprise team specifically. You can have detailed permissions. You can have usage reports for that team. You can download them as a daily or monthly usage report in a CSV format and keep an eye on the different like usages that are happening within that team. It was either using a lot of add-ons, um, either using a private space, so all of that you can get access to it. So let me just show you what I mean by that because it's always easier to see it in a real environment. So this is the pipeline that was in Jesse's demo. It's inside this enterprise team called Intense Camping Team, which is like a demo team that we use um, for like demo purposes. These are all the apps inside that enterprise team. The apps tab, but obviously it, it shows what it is. This is where you create a private space. This is where you see all the users inside this enterprise team and their permissions. The resources tab shows you what's being used, but this is also not the usage tab. This is the usage tab that enables you to download a report and ha actually have detailed information about what's being used inside that enterprise team. And finally, this is where you can set up SSO for that one environment that you're responsible for. But imagine that you are part of a, a massive company and there are enterprise teams created on a daily basis for different business units or for different projects. So let's say you are part of like Salesforce and you are at the very top of a big organization inside Salesforce. And there are enterprise teams created for business units, for projects, for locations. There is one enterprise team created for a project that the marketing team is working on. There is another enterprise team that's created just for the location, like one location, let's say London. There is another enterprise team that's created for the API team. So if you are, just an example, if you are responsible to keep an eye on the usage report or the consumption across all of these enterprise teams, imagine how difficult of a job you, you'll have. You have to log in to each of these enterprise teams, to each of these development units one by one, download that usage report that I showed you in the previous demo, put them next to each other, even more complicated, you might have to enter that information into uh, an Excel spreadsheet, all of them together, analyze them, be able to summarize them and provide them to your manager. Or if you are the manager, be able to compare the usage. Just one example. So it's really difficult. And this is where this other product comes to rescue you. So the other product or feature that we've built for enterprise admins is called an enterprise account. So as you can see here, an enterprise account basically sits at the very top of your company. Best practice is each company gets only one enterprise account. Uh, so think about it as like a control panel. This is where you as the manager or the CTO or the CFO log into, and from here you can download a usage report that basically breaks down the usage per enterprise team across your entire company. Obviously you should always trust people who work at your company, but let's say someone by mistake deletes an, a private space or deletes an app. You can go to this highest level um, of your company, download an auditing report, and be able to see which user within what enterprise team deleted a private space or deleted an app by mistake and when. Um, this is where you can go and set up SSO for your entire company. It's, it's not gonna overwrite the SSO that you've set up for an individual enterprise team, but if you just want to do it once and for all your different projects, this is where you can go and do it. And it also gives you access and visibility into all users 
all their permissions, uh, their security status, and the teams that, are, that have been created um, across, um, across companies. So if you're currently using Heroku Enterprise, or if you're planning to, this is what it's going to look like um, on, on your main uh, dashboard. So when you log into Heroku, at the high level, the square icon is an enterprise account. Everything underneath is um, our enterprise teams. And what you see on the right is like, this is like this was the demo environment, and these are my roles. So the, it shows like I was an admin in that enterprise team and member in the other ones, so on the other ones. So you would see everything, all the information that you need at the basic level in the main menu. To, to summarize uh, like the values that you get from an enterprise account, it's basically self-service. You can create like unlimited number of enterprise teams, which is very important if you are in a growing business. Uh, you can have visibility um, and better control across, um, across the organization. And having um, the ability to keep an eye on the security status the ability to um, download audit reports and the set up SSO, it gives you high trust. So enough of the slides, let me just show you in a, in a real environment what I'm talking about. So this is an enterprise account. And what I'm looking at right now is the tab called My Teams, which shows the teams that I have a role in them. If I wanna see all the enterprise teams across the company, I switch to this other tab. Remember that you can see some of these. You only have view. You might not be able to dig into them and look at the pipeline or app level information. This is that option that I mentioned that would enable you to create unlimited number of enterprise teams for your projects. If you're growing and you need to create like new teams per day, it's really helpful. If you want to keep an eye on like the permissions of the users across your organization, this tab is really helpful. Um, it shows you the permission of all users. You can search and find the user. And the security status column, it shows you who has 2FA set up, who has SSO set up. If you need to like, contact these people, if, part, if it's part of the company policy, you can find out that information here. Um, and like, let's say you're in a company with like, I don't know, like 2,000 users. You don't wanna go through tabs and pages of like, users to look at their permission. So there are these really cool filtering options here that you can filter based on a certain permission group or a certain security status to be able to, to pull that information um, out of the, the Heroku dashboard. Um, it's super easy to add users, just enter the email address permissions. It's super easy to edit permissions. So as a manager, everything is very easy and available to you um, at the enterprise account level. Um, I'll go over the usage tab in the next slide, but for now, let me show you the settings tab of an enterprise account. If you don't like the name, this is where you change it. Um, and I'm also going to show you the audit log very, very, very quickly after the slide, but this is also where you can set up SSO at the highest level of your organization. It's been set up for this enterprise account already, but it's just like, you, it's within a few clicks. All you need to do is like you have the, the, the basic information to set up SSO, you do have the certificate, you just add them here, like turn on the SSO toggle, save, and your SSO is set up for, for the entire company. Um, the other very cool feature that we recently added after um, witnessing that some of our customers forget to basically update um, or change uh, their, their certificate is that you can now have more than one certificate here. So you can have up to three. If one of your SSO certificates expires, for some reason you forget to change it, we automatically switch to an active certificate. So your users won't be locked out and they don't have to go through the process of setting up SSO again. So let me now show you the usage reports that you can see for your entire company. Um, so they're available both monthly and daily, and this is exactly the same at an enterprise team level. That's one unit. Um, if you want to look at the usage across the company for one day, you can go download it here. Um, I'm gonna download it for the month of October for this example. Um, it would be a CSV file, and when you open the file, this is what you're gonna see. So you see the name of the enterprise account, which is the one that um, I was demoing from, uh, the name of the team adding to the usage of this month, apps inside that enterprise team adding to the usage of that month, 
and what's being used? Is it an add-on? Is it a third-party add-on? Dyno? Um, do you have connect roastings? Are there private spaces that you've added? So all of that information comes to you in this, this one file. So that admin doesn't have to log into each enterprise team one by one. Click it here, download it as a monthly file, everything is provided for you in this file. And then audit logs. So yeah, as I said, usually like you, you trust your team, you trust your people, but let's say you need to have like auditing power for whatever reason, or you need to check for a certain event that happened across your company. So these are, this is the list of all the, uh, all the audited events that are being pulled inside that audit log that you can get access to and download it as a monthly, uh, monthly file. So for example, a few days ago, I, for the purpose of uh, this talk, I went to a demo account and I deleted a private space. So now I'm going to download the, the audit log file for the month of November and search for the entity that I deleted because you know that it's like, okay, a private space is, is um, missing. So when I search for it, it's just this easy, it pops up. And if you know how to look at this block of code, it has everything in it. It tells you who deleted it, it was my user. It tells you that which region it was in, it tells you what enterprise account it was in, it tells you what enterprise team it was in, and obviously it has a type that like, hey, yes, a private space, it was a private space type, and then it was also destroyed by this user, my user. So with that, um, I'm going to close this talk with the summary. Uh, we talked about what Heroku is. Um, hopefully at this point, um, most of you have switched from one to two or three, it's no longer a candy bar. Uh, we talked about the type of organizations who should be using Heroku. It's no longer just for startups. You don't have to go to another platform if your team starts to grow. It's both startup um, enterprises. Um, but Jesse went over the experience um, as a developer uh, in an enterprise environment. And uh, I also went over some of the features that are available if you are a manager or an admin within an enterprise company. So with that, we are going to open to questions. If you have any questions, please come to the microphone in the middle um, and we'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, when you deployed um, to prod, did it run test cases as well or was that only for um, the test environment and then once it's ready, it just flips a switch and it's ready. Um, I've run into problems in the past where I've had people like manually delete files like in prod. <laughs> and so like running the test cases again is sometimes useful uh, in prod. <laughs> so I didn't know if that was like an option that you can set or if it did it and it was just fast or something. Yeah, it's, it's a configuration you can have. So the way that we had that particular pipeline set up was that CI had to run before it was code was automatically deployed to staging because we had those auto deploys turned on. Right. Um, because we were requiring like prod deploys to be manual, um, and this is also part of the granular access controls, right? Yeah. So maybe you say, oh, I want everyone on my team to be able to deploy to staging, but only like these two senior people can deploy to prod. Um, so you can make sure that only certain permissions can deploy to prod, and likewise, you can configure whether CI must pass before um, it's okay. deployed to any particular environment. All right, great. And um, uh, my other question was about uh, multi-platform. Like if you have like a core branch that goes off into um, like iOS specific code, Play Store specific code, and then like web specific code, mm -hmm. and they're all kind of woven together in that way, but they all use this like core branch with their own like slight differences in their own branches. Um, uh, currently we're using um, Azure, and uh, I'm not on the DevOps team, I, I work with them, so I'm not sure like how much they just don't know, or, because it's a new mm -hmm. thing that they started at my company, but, um, I guess my question is, is, is that like an easy thing to pull off? Like it, it's essentially not, each one doesn't have their own specific full code base. There's like a core and then there's certain areas where if it's 
this platform, it just uses this kind of code and it merges everything together. Are you using Git for this? Yeah. Okay, and so it's like a Git branch that's being deployed? Right. Yeah, so one thing that I didn't show you on here is that in the Heroku dashboard or via CLI, right? Like the, we showed the dashboard because that like looks pretty. Um, mm -hmm. All of this stuff is also available via CLI. In fact, my early experiences with Heroku were all via CLI, right? Okay. Um, so all of these commands allow you to deploy a very specific branch to a specific environment. So you could say you only want the, you know, web API final, right. final okay. branch to go to your staging instance. Is that answering your question? Yeah, 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 okay. that's perfect. Yeah, it makes it really easy to, and also that's one thing I appreciate is that it's Git aware. So when I was having those experiences in DC, um, deploying my code to the cloud, but not with a platform, it was like whatever code was on your platform would just go up and like, right. maybe I have a weird file there, maybe I've been playing around with things, and in Heroku it's like you're deploying a Git branch. Um, by default, usually it's master, but in a lot of organizations they deploy a dev branch or a dev yeah, preview right. or whatever. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, thanks, I appreciate it. Um, I think that's it on my end. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any more questions? Thank right. you. Cool. Uh, I have a question. Um, so, my team is a .NET shop, okay? And we're using Team City. Okay, mm -hmm. but we're about to deploy in a week or two Salesforce. So I currently have two systems, two environments, and I'm wondering, because I haven't seen anything here that spells .NET, okay, at all. <laughs> Does it speak .NET in any form? We are using GitHub, we do it um, for that, but um, is there any functionality in here that you know, if we choose to move, because I would mm. prefer it, a, a common integrated environment. Mm. I actually don't know the answer to that. Do you know if the Heroku platform supports I, .NET? I don't honestly okay. No, I can look that up but for you. Not yet, not, so Heroku not doesn't natively okay. support yeah. that. All right, so that answers no. that question. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you haven't, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think what we found with a lot of our enterprise customers in their interest in moving to Heroku, someone was just telling me a really interesting example from Macy's. So Macy's runs their, a lot of their services uh, on yeah. Heroku now. And this has not always been the case. Mm -hmm. the, obviously, Hero Macy's has been around for a very long time. They've been doing e-commerce for a long time. Um, and they had a summer intern who came in and was doing a little intern project. And he was like, hey, I wanna like show everyone this. Can I deploy it on Heroku? And we're like, sure, you can do that. Uh, and he did that, it was, it was a not a .NET project, but he, he did this quick deploy and everyone was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like our intern was able to deploy this app, share it around with everyone, have different environments. And as a result, they've been moving more and more of their services to Heroku, especially as they write new services. And they found that it really has infused like this energy into their development platform because oftentimes large enterprises, you, it gets very slow, right? And you can't just like ditch your old code, ditch your old platform mm -hmm. right away. Um, but I think what we were seeing is that a lot of these enterprises are like slowly writing new services and deploying them to Heroku and it allows them to move really quickly, at least in some small corners of their organization. We have about one minute, 42 seconds. <laughs> about, <laughs> about one minute, about 42 one seconds. Minute. <laughs> if you can think of other questions, we're, we're gonna hang out here too for a few minutes. Uh, we can also come see us at the booth. Thanks again for coming to our talk. Um, I forgot to switch to the sooner, but there are some other cool Heroku talks you can go to. Mm -hmm. You can find them on the agenda too. And also, if you guys are interested going in listening to Obama, it's probably <laughs> now time to line up. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.